Hi everyone, Hauke here with part two of my NAS project. As a reminder, when my off-the-shelf network attached storage recently died on me, I decided to build my very own DIY solution from scratch. In the last video, I went over what happened and covered some of the basics like what a NAS is, why you would want one, as well as some of the key concepts like RAID. If you haven't watched it, here's a card you can click on if you're curious, because I won't go over the stuff in detail again. And if you're only looking for part three, where I select, install and configure the NAS software, feel free to skip ahead as well. In this video, I will go over what hardware I'm using and correct some of the issues that came with those choices. We'll also discuss how I plan to actually configure the NAS. As always, I will have the video broken into chapters and I will link to those in the description below. So if you want to skip something or jump around, be my guest. The hardware I have available is this Gen 7 Hewlett Packard ProLine Microserver N40L and a bunch of lightly used hard drives. This guy dates back to about 2010 if I'm not mistaken. It has four drive bays, two RAM slots and a fifth onboard SATA port as well as an eSATA port in the rear. Plus an internal and six external USB 2 ports. It's actually quite nifty. It even has additional screws and right size tools stored in the bay door, which you can unhook during maintenance for better access. So I think this is fairly well thought out. There also is plenty of documentation available, which certainly comes in handy if I need to change something. It is of course only SATA 2, but well, given the age, duh. So that's gonna limit my read write speed performance. And no matter what drive I put in there, I won't be seeing anything really beyond 300 megabyte per second but at least I can expand my storage or add USB 3 ports if I so choose via one of its PCIe expansion slots. The processor is a 1.5 GHz AMD Turion 2 Neon N40L. That's not only a mouthful, it also is an old 45 nanometer architecture. The RAM is DDR3 running at 800 MHz, but at least it's error correcting ECC memory. So yeah, not exactly a supercomputer, but as this is mainly going to be my file server and I don't really plan to do any heavy processing like transcoding anytime soon, I think it'll be perfectly fine as my first foray into NAS building. So let's get going. The first step was to inspect the hardware and see if it even still turns on, which it did, yes, but given the age of the power supply and the noise it's fan made, I decided to order a replacement PSU for about 60 bucks. Turns out that was a good idea, cause the old PSU literally died a few days after I'd done that. And for some reason I couldn't unplug the power cord, still it's attached, so this goes to recycling as is. I have considered upgrading the RAM as well, but for now I think I'll see how the system behaves with its 8GB on board and revisit that one later, if and when it becomes necessary. Next I went on the interwebs to see if there's anything in terms of updates available out there. Among a couple of drivers and documentation, I found a newer BIOS and a service pack. So I went ahead and downloaded and installed those. In case you found this video to learn specifically how to update the BIOS on this particular machine, let's go over the BIOS upgrade real quick as it isn't as straightforward as one might think. First, you need to find the BIOS upgrade file. The HP support site has a lot of good stuff to offer, but they will not let you download a BIOS update unless you have an active warranty with them. So instead, go over to the N40L fandom page and head to the BIOS hack section. Here you can either download SB64420 directly via the Wayback Machine link, or further down the page there's a link to Nathaniel Perez's webpage where you can read all about the why and the how of what you're about to do, and grab the provided mod package which includes the same upgrade file. This is as good a time as any to grab a USB stick and get it ready for install. Make sure it's empty and in good working order. I like to format mine in TFS for good measure. Extract the zip archive you downloaded a minute ago and run SP64420. It'll unpack itself into a folder and open a page in your browser to navigate from. Here you want to launch the setup creation utility, but be careful to select the correct drive. Whatever you've got on there will get wiped in the process. If the page didn't open for some reason or you get this type of error, you can always navigate to the folder everything got unpacked into earlier and launch the utility manually. The file you're looking for is called hpqusb.exe and if you didn't pay attention during the install where stuff got written, here's how you can find the folder. Just make sure you run the utility as an administrator, otherwise you'll get the same error again. Once the utility is finished, you now have a bona fide BIOS recovery slash upgrade memory stick. If anything goes wrong from here on out, you should be able to revert to the official HP BIOS with this stick, or another one you create the same way. 
And if you're not yet running BIOS version 41, this would be the time to boot your device from this stick. The server should automatically start upgrading the BIOS, and once you see the C prompt, remove the stick and reboot. Now let's fix the BIOS so your device works as it should. Open the folder with the mod files you downloaded and extracted earlier and copy the ROM file onto your USB stick. Confirm replace when prompted. Boot your server from this stick like we just went over and don't touch anything until the C prompt pops up, which shouldn't take longer than about a minute. And when you reboot, you should now see a different date for your BIOS. Okay, now that the little guy has regained his composure somewhat, let's talk about how I actually plan to configure the NAS. As I have several smaller but otherwise perfectly fine drives laying around, I intend to rope them together into one large array, so I don't have to interact with a bunch of smaller individual drives. That will mean something like a union file system. And because any drive eventually will fail, likely sooner than later in my case, I want to be able to replace and rebuild any failing drive in the array without any loss of data. This will require a parity drive in some type of RAID configuration. Last but not least, I don't want to find out the hard way again that RAID is not backup. So I want to ensure I have a secondary copy of my files available in case something catastrophic happens. In terms of constraints, the microserver has four 3.5 inch hard drive bays, plus an additional internal SATA as well as an external eSATA port, and I have a couple of extension cards. So considering the drives I have available, here's what I have in mind. Combine three hard drives, two 2 terabyte and one 3 terabyte, into a 7 terabyte array, use a 16 terabyte drive for RAID parity, and use another 16 terabyte drive as a separate external backup solution. But how could I hear somebody typing in the comments, why don't you use SSDs, they're so much faster. Yes, SSDs are faster, they're also more expensive and don't have this kind of capacity. Besides, may I remind you, person I just made up, that the hardware is running SATA 2, so I wouldn't be able to tap into those speeds regardless. Back to our configuration here. Your parity drive should be at least as large as your biggest individual data drive. So 16 terabyte is complete overkill, but I found a really good deal on a pair of WD Red Pros, and this gives me plenty of opportunity to grow the system in the near future. By the way, this is how Western Digital shipped me those two drives. Not complaining, I just found it slightly hilarious. But before I commit all my data to the drives, I want to get comfortable with the technology, test replacing drives, and so on. And for that, I am creating a much simpler test setup with two data drives, an 80 and a 250 gigabyte, and one 250 gigabyte parity drive. So that is what we will be doing for this build. Cue the build montage. We also need to think about the drive the NAS software or operating system will reside on, which we will install in the next video. Here we have three options, a regular hard disk, an SSD, or a USB stick. Because I have enough SATA ports for now, and I'm primarily going for a proof of concept with this build, and I don't really need the speed of an SSD, I will use an old 40 gigabyte, yes, they used to exist, hard disk for now. But I think I'll switch over to a USB stick for the final build in order to free up as many SATA ports as possible for additional data storage. But more on that in the next video. Thank you for following along so far. If any of this was at all interesting or helpful, please consider leaving a like and comment below. I'd love to hear if anyone else out there is still using 10 year old hardware to run an ass. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content. I'll see you next time when we'll pick and install the software for our NAS and then configure it to work in our network. Thanks again for watching. Oh, come on.